Hello, I'm Monica Price and welcome to Cuppa TV. On today's show we welcome Joshua Williams, who's just been crowned Mr Birmingham and now heading for Mr England. I'm also joined by producer and remixer from London, Priest J, who's here to talk about the music industry and working with artists such as Will I Am. guest today joins me right off the back of winning Mr Birmingham 2015. He joins us today to talk about his life and experiences. Joshua, welcome. Oh, thank Lovely you. to see thank you. Thank you for having me. It's just wonderful to see you. And of course, welcome and congratulations on winning Mr Birmingham 2015. Oh, thank you so much. And that's quite recent, isn't it, Joshua, that, that lovely accolade you've, you've achieved? Yep, literally just three months ago. Okay. Only in March I won the competition. That's great. And is it your first win of any competition? My first time I've ever competed in a competition like this. Wow, first time competing and you've won it. I can't believe it myself. <laughs> it's, honestly, I still can't even remember the night. It's just a blur. So I was going to say, just to take us back, but how did it all begin for you? Was it something you always wanted to do? Well, I've always heard of the Mr England competition mm. through, obviously, Mr World, Miss World, yes. and obviously the Universe pageant. But I never really thought it would be something for me. But then I was at a fashion show around a year ago today, and um, Comic Miss Birmingham, Rachel Barker, uh, 2013, she was actually in attendance and she was hosting the show. She said, why don't you try it for the competition? Yeah. And then I researched a bit more around it and I found out the ethics and values behind the competition. And I just thought, it's too big an opportunity to pass up. And then after competing, I ended up winning the title, which I still, <laughs> I still can't believe. And what do you get? Do you get a cup or a, or a sash? What, what do you get? Uh, you we, get we get the sash and we get entry into the Mr England competition as oh, well, wow. in addition to representing our home city for two years. That's brilliant. Now, we've had Mr Black Country on the show, on the Cup of TV. So, um, you know, it's wonderful to have a representative for Mr Birmingham as well. So, again, what does it mean to you, though, Joshua, having that sort of title? Because that's a very, yeah, you must be very proud, I would imagine. Oh, of, co of course I'm proud. But I just try and stay grounded with the whole title because I feel that it's just more what you do with it, mm -hmm. because you can, yeah, like, you can let it go to your head, sorry, mm -hmm. and you can just let it almost absorb you, but I just want to be in it for the right, uh, the right reasons and just be able to excel through the competition for the morals and ethics that I hold true to myself. Mm. So it's, there's more to it than just winning it, as you oh, say. Oh, definitely. So tell us a little bit about you then, Joshua. How did it all begin? Was it something that you thought, oh, yes, I'm going to do this, or as you said, no, you just sort of fell into it? Yeah, I'd, yeah I just ended up really falling into it. Like I just researched around the competition in the advancement towards it mm. and I found that I could see uh, a central theme to the competition is the charity Beauty of a Purpose, mm. which is the official Miss and Mr World competition, uh, charity, sorry, mm. and that looks at helping change the lives of young children and disadvantaged people across the entire world. Oh. And that charity is something that really corresponds deeply with me and as soon as I thought, uh, found that that element was embedded in the competition, I knew that it's just something that I have yeah. to go for. And what's that charity again? What's it called again? It's called Beauty with a Purpose. Beauty with a Purpose, yeah. So, and as you say, that is a worldwide charity, isn't it? Yeah. So, and is it something that you know you're very keen on doing, Joshua? You know, being involved in charity work. Oh, definitely. Uh, through Beauty with a Purpose, I actually set up my own charity fashion show, and that was held at the Burlington Hotel in Birmingham, and that was all to raise funds for Beauty with a Purpose. So I managed to source all the designers, all the models, all the photographers, MUAs, literally yeah. any, anything you can think Fantastic. of. And I brought it all to the Burlington Hotel yeah. to obviously raise the profile of the Birmingham fashion scene, which has been in decline, but also to raise funds for such a vital humanitarian project. Mm. So through that, I've actually managed to raise, well, I'm trying to keep it a bit secret. Yes, don't tell us. Well, do you want to tell us? Give I, us I, I, can give you, I can give you a hint. <laughs> give us I'm, a hint. Uh, my <laughs> initial target was £1,000, yes. and I've smashed that target so Brilliant. far. That's excellent. It's, in, it's incredible. I couldn't believe the support I had. Yeah. But I've also uh, an ambassador for the Red Bag Co, which is a homeless oh, charity that? in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And they go out and runs every Sunday night and they feed the homeless in the Birmingham city centre. And I've been joining them as frequently as I can, obviously yes. with other commitments. Yes, of course. But yeah. I'm really grateful to be able to be an ambassador for such a worthy cause. Mm. But then also in addition to that, yes. I'm an ambassador in Birmingham for the mental health tar uh, charity Time to Change. Mm. And I'm going to be working alongside them in events coming up. Oh, that's great. A busy boy. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to embrace the moment. Yeah. And do you enjoy it, though? You obviously do. I mean, you're obviously very oh, happy with what I you're doing. I absolutely love it. Honestly, it's such an incredible opportunity. Mm. And being 17, it's just, it's something that nobody else my age can really say that they've had the opportunity to do it. So just having this opportunity presented to me, it's just a matter of being able to take it with both hands and just being able to really 
just try and push through and just try to do the best that I can. And is it, are you finding, Joshua, now you've got this title and obviously you've got a lot of passion, you're helping other charities, has it opened doors for you in other areas as well? Oh, definitely. Life? Oh, of course. Mm. I'd already done uh, a bit of modelling beforehand, but through this, uh, there's more promotional work now in terms of modelling with the Mr Birmingham title as well. But charity events, community events, uh, even like some press events as well, I've been invited to now because of the title. Like just the other day, I got to uh, attend Ariana Grande's uh, gig in, at the Barclay Card Arena. Yes. And I was able to do a report on that as a journalist. Oh. And now I've actually been able to join the journalist team on I Am Birmingham. So it's just oh. opened an array of doors for yes, me that I would exactly. never have been able to have before. And when, as Mr Birmingham, do you have certain things that they, you know, expectations that you have to do? Is, is there certain things you have to do, events you have to attend? Um, not really. It's just a matter of what you can obviously do with mm. your time scale. But I feel that to be an ambassador to my city and hopefully be an ambassador to my country as well, it's a matter of being able to take part in as much as you can. Because if you let these opportunities pass up, it's just wasted effort, really. Mm. And when, you, when you're preparing, how do you prepare, Joshua, for the event, especially for Mr England? Now, that, when's that going to be? Is that uh, August? That's August the 13th mm -hmm. at the Rico Arena in Coventry. Yes. So it's actually in our hometown, almost. Exactly. You know, it's Literally in our, our home region. Exactly. So are you pleased about that? Oh, I'm so excited for it. I can't believe it. It's coming around really fast, yes. though. <laughs> and what do you have to do to prepare for that? Well, for that, there's a loads of rounds for it. So there's uh, an evening wear round, which actually has a James Bond theme. There'll be a top model round. There's obviously the charity and talent round, but then there's like loads of little different rounds embedded in the competition. And it's a matter of all of them and you get points for each of them. And then that's all added together to be able to conclude who will be the winner, second place, runner up, etc. So it's a matter of being able to just spread myself almost in preparing yes. for each element to be yeah. able to just make sure that I can just bring my A game and be able to represent Birmingham on the home stage. And when, you know, when you're doing all this, have you got a good support system around you, Joshua? Have oh, you got definitely. friends and family around you that support you? My friends and family, are the, they're actually the most incredible people I've ever had the privilege of meeting. Like, through the competition itself, it's brought me and my family closer together. And my family, are, they're my biggest supporters, really. Yes. But then Quite right. <laughs> exactly, on, on, on hope so as well, actually. I hope so, yes, it's it. But, uh, like, my friends and my girlfriend as well, Lucy. Yeah. It's just... I've never known people so kind-hearted as them, and they support me, even in my crazy adventures. Yes. Like for the fashion show, I planned that in about nine weeks. It was a crazy idea, and from the start, rather than just putting me down, they supported me and encouraged me, and it's something that I just appreciate wholeheartedly. And what's the best thing that's come out of it, Joshua, would you say? Is there one thing that's, since you've won that title, that you think, wow, this, this is just amazing? It's, it sounds a bit cliche, but definitely the charity aspect of it. Mm because I've always been passionate about that and mm. I've always wanted to have the platform to be able to reach out and truly help those in need. But through the title now, I've been able to be an ambassador for several charities. I'm able to give exposure to these charities as well. So it's almost like through the competition, it's given me the platform to be able to do these things that without it, I would have, I would have been able to take part, of course, but not on the level that I'm able to now. Mm. And that's just something that I appreciate immensely. Oh, fantastic. And I mean, Mr England, I mean, that's a massive, massive competition. Pageant, they call it, don't they? So, and I mean, again, being a male, is it, do you think more males are, are getting involved in pageants now, Joshua, than ever before? Oh, definitely. I feel it's still a relatively new thing, mm. obviously, with Mr England, because it's been Miss England for, say, 40 years yes. now. But I feel that more men, as they get, obviously, the opportunity to be able to enter the competition and to find out stuff about contestants, it's just a matter of they think oh, maybe I could do that. Yes. Maybe I, like me, I yeah. can be an ambassador and they go for it too. Mm. But with beauty uh, pageants as a whole as well, there's a really big misconception about them still because obviously with the Miss Universe pageant, with the Miss World pageant, it's still that uh, almost stereotype that it's just being about, uh, about being beautiful, mm. about being able to have the swimwear body. But it's nothing like that anymore. It's a charity aspect. It's about being an ambassador, being humble being able to just embrace the moment and that's what the competition and what beauty pageants as a whole try and represent now. So if, what would you say to any man that's watching Cup of TV, you know, that's maybe thinking about doing something that you're doing, would you, would you say for them to go for it? What would advice would you give them? I'd just say, honestly, just, just go for it. Yeah. Like there's nothing holding you back except you. So if you just go for it, just try and do the best that you can and be yourself for the whole time because the judges aren't looking for a clone or a copy. They're looking for you mm. and just, just enter. Embrace. Exactly, <laughs> embrace the moment. And Joshua, what's the future if you won it, which would be amazing? Uh, we will mean that I'm an ambassador for the whole of England and I actually get to compete in the Mr World competition as well, oh, which I think is held in China this year. So that'll be a month-long competition in China where I'll be able to try and compete for the title of Mr World. But through Mr England as well, obviously I'll be able to 
work with my charity events on a national and international scale. And would it be more full time, I should imagine, if you got Mr. England, if you if you were you know lucky and privileged enough to win that title, would that mean that you that would take up quite a lot of your time? Oh, it would definitely take up a lot of my time. But I'm really able at the moment to be able to obviously juggle a lot of things like college, work. It's just a matter of being able to find that balance in life. But with Mr. England, there's certain opportunities and certain events that will never, ever pass up. Mm. So it's just a matter of being able to try and distinguish between, obviously, my college life and my Mr. Yes. Well, possibly England life. Yes. <laughs> but with Mr. England, even if it is full time or part time, it's just something that I need to be able to just truly take mm. take groups on and just be able to propel in because yeah. it's just such a huge honor to even be a finalist yes i mean i mean it's, you've done incredibly well just to even get to where you've got to now thank you Joshua. so much but, i really you know, appreciate it you must come back on if you win mr england you must come back on to cover <laughs> oh, tv definitely. bring the sash and a cup i imagine you get a cup for, oh, I, for, I, I for hope get a cup. and a crown do you get a crown oh, i don't know i hope so i hope so i know the girls get the little <laughs> tiara yes. so well it's been lovely to meet you Joshua. And thank you so much for coming on and wish you all the best thank it's you it's been a pleasure thank, thank you, you. Welcome back to Cuppa TV. I'm now joined by Priest J, a producer, remixer and engineer based in London. Priest J, welcome to Cuppa TV. Hi Monica, thank Wonderful you for having me. Wonderful to see you. No, thank you Lovely very much to for see coming. You too. So Priest J, tell us a little bit about what you do. You've got quite an exciting career. Tell us all about um, it. Well, I'm a producer engineer from London. I've lived in London pretty much all my life. I was the former owner of Stoneham Recording Studio in Shepherd's Bush. Mm -hmm. I do actually still own the studio, but I've relocated to North West London and I use it just for personal use. Fantastic. I've worked with some of the biggest stars yes. and artists that this planet has to offer, shall we say. Now, before we get onto that, what made you get into you know, being a producer? Have you, have you always been interested in music? I've always been interested in music ever since I was extremely young. Um, started off as a little bit of a DJ and then just grew into the production of making music. Mm. And what is it that you love about the production of music? I just love music. Mm. I love the soothingness of music. I love the energy you get from music. And... With the production side of it, it sort of taps into my personality with the problem-solving side of it. Mm. And when you're when you're um, you know working with different artists, um, is, do you work with all sort of different artists and different genres of music? I do, I do. I've done everything. The only thing I haven't actually done is country music, but I've pretty much worked on everything, mm. including international sounds as well. Fantastic. So tell us about some of the stars that you've worked with, Priest James. Um, it's not. It's difficult to say stuff about yes. people you work with, obviously, because the confidentiality. Yes. But I've worked on sessions with people like Will I Am. Mm -hmm. We did um, for Rihanna. We did the SOS and also Umbrella for the UK shows. So they needed some re-edits done. They came to us in our studios, and we put it all together for them. Fantastic. And when you're working, do you work with a team? Is there a team around you, or do you just prefer to work alone? It's generally just myself, and then I have an assistant who does my little bits of running, my little teas and coffees yes. and shop runs and so yeah. on. That's right. Yeah. And is it, do you feel that the music industry is, you know, very, is it the central place in London or do you feel, is that why you base yourself in London? No, I'm, I'm in London because obviously we moved to London, you know, many, many mm. years ago. So my family moved to London. So I am a product of my environment, mm. you know. But I mean, Birmingham is here where we are in the West Midlands. Yes. It has a really popular and very good music scene. Um, have you ever done anything here in Birmingham at all? Not in Birmingham as such, but in, I did grow up in the Midlands. I used to spend all my summer holidays in the Midlands staying at my family's house, my dad's mm. brothers, my uncles, mm. and they were very much musicians themselves. So they used to always take me to recording studios mm. and I used to sit in lots of live sessions when I was a lot younger. But mm. obviously being young, you know, in your very early days, you didn't really take it in, but it was actually absorbed by myself. Mm. It's something I tapped into very late in my so life. So how did you start? I mean, you're a producer, what does it, what remixer? So for, yes. for the viewers that won't actually understand what no. that is, tell us what that does, well, tell us what you do. A producer and remixer are generally two different titles. A producer is someone who will have a product and bring it, help to bring it to, to market. So they'll listen to it, they'll see what needs doing, and they'll work on it to get it ready for market. With a remixer, generally somebody approaches us with a set of vocals, and what we would do is we would recreate a new backing track for them. Oh, right, so, or, you've, so someone would come to you with a song. Yes. And then you would say, right, I think it needs to be like this. Yes. S slow or a melody or a of, fast or a hip course. hop. Or whatever. Is, that, is that what yes, it is? Yes, and that's what it is. And all big artists have remixes done of their songs. Yeah. I would pretty much say 90% of what you hear out there isn't what's original to how it was recorded and is generally changed along the way somewhere. Could be by an arranger, could be by another producer or by a remixer. Classic example, Justin Bieber with the new song done by Skrillex. Yes. Justin yes. would have recorded the song mm. in the US. He would have sent it to the guys, the Skrillex team. 
they would have listened to it and done a completely new remix of the song. And when you're mixing, is that quite exciting? It is, yes, yeah. but it is. It can tend to be a little bit of, should we say, slow Chinese torture because yeah. you listen to the same song yes, a thousand true. times yes, and, it, yeah. you know, really have to get into detail within the mm. song to make sure the hi-hats are right and all the way down to the bass and each frequency is correct and stuff. So, so when you're doing it, you break the song down? I do. Place. You break it all down into the different instruments. I do. And then you put it back all together again. I do. So I would literally listen to every single instrument on its own. And then I would tweak each instrument and adjust the frequencies according so they all sit together mm. and so complement each other. What did you do with Will I Am, for instance? Well, Will I Am actually called up because he was looking for a place to record. And I was the, I was the owner of Stone Rooms. We're actually world renowned. So we had pretty much most A-list artists coming to mm. us at this point. And he needed somewhere to work for six weeks. So I was working, Will I Am's very self-sufficient. He does everything himself. But what he does do is he just needs somebody to help him in the studio, to operate possibly some machinery, to get stuff going, mm. to set up his equipment. So we did the whole setup for him. And I was pretty much on hand, I would say 24 hours a day for like six weeks. I'm talking, could be silly o'clock. Yes. <laughs> it could be two o'clock in the morning, my phone would Welcome ring. Welcome to the world of music. <laughs> Will, is, Will is ready to be in the studio. He'll be there in half an hour so yes. I would have to jump in my car yeah. get to the studio get everything running and with a session like that nothing goes off mm. everything is just left on so you can just walk into the building and then we'll last for a little bit more level on here a little bit more level on there mm. oh can we get this bit of kit going and you would just be like his engineer mm. and when you're working with these stars I mean I know you can't say you can't possibly no. choose between who you were but is there one particular person that you've worked with Priest say um, that you think you know actually you really enjoyed that or, or one perhaps that surprised you um I've worked with yeah I would say the most fun session I actually had mm. was working with an old idol of mine which is Alexandra O'Neill oh yes so I'm very much a person I've worked with a lot of people I definitely don't get starstruck mm. and I'm very much to myself and I do what I've meant to do but working with Alex growing up listening to his music mm. being a big fan going to his concerts when I was young yes and then having him in the studio and being such a lovely man yes was such a lovely experience it was so sort of overwhelming in yes. that sense yeah. you know and then what are, what are you doing in the future then you've got your new single I have which we're going to play today to the viewers that are watching yes, yes. so I've done a single with a chap called uh, DJ Lantern mm -hmm. and it's very much that sort of London underground sort of sound which I'm sort of trying to yes. represent <laughs> here on my t-shirt a little bit today. Um, we've taken that, drum and bass is very much a London, a it UK is. sound. Yes. So we've taken that UK sound, mixed it with sort of a Caribbean sound and created this mm -hmm. great dance hall drum and bass style track. Mm -hmm. But moving on from that, we're actually currently working on the second single which will be out possibly next year, and that's going to be called Jump. And mm -hmm. I'm in the process of doing the album. Fantastic. So very busy. It is. So are you yes. going to be working with DJ Lantern for the whole oh, of this album? Not for the whole of this no. album. I'm hoping to have Lantern on around four singles of my album. Mm -hmm. And I've got some other features. I've also got some A-list Bollywood singers, which are going to feature on my album, which are so excited to be on it. It's yeah. amazing. So. Fantastic. So this is going to take you around the world, Bruce Jack? It will. Yes. I hope so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hoping to do a lot of touring, a lot yeah. of shows, um, get back into the DJing as well. Yeah, I'm going to say, yes, you do some DJing as well, I don't used to, you, yes. So. I used to be the resident for the International Music Council. Yeah. So You're going to do some of that as well? I am going to try and get back into it yeah. and make it all part of the show, oh, you know? Right. Well, it's been fantastic to meet you, Bruce Jay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And now that's it for today uh, but I'd like to thank Joshua and Priest Jay for joining me today we'd love to hear from you so please do get in touch with us either by email or you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at Big Centre TV and now to play us out we're going to hear the new single Hands in the Air by Priest Jay featuring Lantern thank you for watching take care bye bye <laughs> I'm a real thing. In my heart, I'm not feeling it in my soul. Tell the young and tell the old, tell the rich and tell the poor. This one is exclusive, you may buy here. This one be poor. From what I've done, my layers to the shoes of Bangalore. Come on, everyone, put your hands in the air. Put your hands in the air. Put your hands in the air. Put your hands in the air.
Yeah. 